Good morning and welcome back to another Westies Angling. Today you're joining me for day seven of my Northwest Rod Race where I'm trying to tick off as many species off this list as I can in seven days. We're at a Mill Lodge Lake today with one purpose and one purpose only and that's trying to tick sturgeon off the list. Now I have to apologise in advance because while this fishery holds sturgeon it is also the noisiest fishery in the world. I've got a fella drilling behind me, I've got trains going past, I've got people driving to and from the mill so if it's noisy today I do apologise that's just part and parcel of these kind of mill lodge lakes the very industrial and it is what it is so I'm fishing it very simply and very subtly today I've got one beefed up rig on one rod and I've got something a little bit more subtle on the other rod they're both fishing on pepper army because sturgeon love meat they love pepper army they love smelly spicy meaty things and they're in the margins as well so I've got one rod under a tree to the left and I've got one rod to the right I plan on being very mobile today however unbeknown to me there's a bleeding match on today it's a weekday and there's a match on which I'm absolutely gutted about because I wanted to try that top corner as well but they're only fishing round the innermost corner so I've got pretty much the rest of the fishery to myself that I can try a few different swims and I intend to spend probably an hour or maybe two hours max in each swim in the hopes of trying to catch one of these prehistoric creatures. So the setup for today is very similar to the eel rig that we used yesterday but with much shorter hook lengths. So I'm using the Corum uh, Bolton Rum Beads. The idea is that the rig pulls out of a little rubber section on the bolt which is enough to set the hook but then the lead's free running so it's a very safe system and that's what I'm using today on both. I've got one like I said a little bit more beefed up I've got that on a small braided rig and then the other one I've got on mono which is a little bit lighter and a little bit more supple and I've got those fishing over the top of some chopped up pepper army segments and I'm using a slightly bigger segment on the hook so that is all I'm doing I'm not putting any ground bait in not using any pellets I'm just using a handful of pepper army on each swim that way I'm not overfeeding and I'm hoping that little subtle approach will just be able to nab me a fish now you can see how big this water is and there's probably only a handful of these fish in this lake so it's a big ask but I'm just banking on this final day just ticking that one last species off and then that's it the rod race is over and to be honest with you if we don't get sturgeon I'm so happy with the way it's gone so far as I've said to you I am more than pleased with the result so if we end on the 22 fish that we're on now it is what it is but we've got to keep going and we've got to try for that extra fish now I could have gone for the gudgeon I've completely disregarded the grass carp I don't think the grass carp's going to happen we've had too much of a temperature drop we've had frost and I don't think it's worth targeting that particular species so we either had gone for gudgeon and we've gone for sturgeon and to be honest with you I think I've got more of a chance of the sturgeon so that's what I'm banking on for today's session so all I did when I got here this morning was got set up picked a peg Which rod was that folks? We just had a bit of a drop back then. Let's tighten up to it. Right, as I was saying to you, all I did when I got set up this morning was cut up some small pieces of pepper army, ready for the session, and unfortunately and annoyingly, the bailiff came round with his dog and his dog's eaten pretty much all my pepper army that I had for today's session and I'm a little bit fuming because pepper army is not cheap and I, I didn't bring loads do you know what I mean because I didn't think I'd need much but luckily I think I've got about maybe half a stick left that's it but it's going to have to do us for today look folks let's get into the video let's try a couple of swims and hopefully nab ourselves a sturgeon just had another couple of singles on this right hand rod now it could just be 
Silver's moving about, I'm not sure. Interestingly, something I've learned today about Pepper Army is it's quite a buoyant bait. I've been feeding small segments and it floats for ages before it sinks. And I wonder if that's one of the reasons why it's such a good bait because of the buoyancy, maybe it's almost a bit like a wafter in the way that it behaves. But it's very, very buoyant. I mean, some of the smaller pieces that I've fed are actually, it's still floating in the same sort of spot. I'm sorry if this isn't a very entertaining video, but unfortunately, when you're targeting specific fish like this, it really is just setting weight tactics. Other than moving swims, there's nothing else that I can do. There's no point swapping baits up or anything like that because I know that this bait works. So I've got to stick at it and just plug away at it and hopefully it does knock that one last fish off the list. Right, folks, it's quarter past 11. Let's move peg. We need to be mobile. It's effort, but I'm going to try and do anything I can to get that last fish off the list. Come on. So I'm going to move all my stuff down the opposite side over there. I'll rebate with a handful of the old pepper army. And then we'll recast the rigs back over the top. Look at this, folks. No expense spurred on Westy's angling. We've got my dad here with his, his, his tin, tin foil bobbins. Oh, oh. No, it was me. Sorry, dad. <laughs> bite is on all day <laughs> oh dear <laughs> it's like a coiled spring folks a coiled spring <laughs> I'm gonna go down this right hand margin far as I can on this swing as far as I can think I can get some loose offerings out I don't want to go too tight into the side because there's loads of dead lily pads Well, folks, it seems like the old Westies angling rod race good luck's ended because the rods have been quiet. Kicking myself. I should have gone for the bleeding gudgeons again, shouldn't I? <laughs> but I honestly thought I'd probably have a better chance at getting a sturgeon, a little bit easier to target. Well, while we're waiting for a sturgeon to absolutely tear off with one of these rigs, I thought I'd do a little bit of a summary about the rod race, the cost involved, my thoughts, what I've learned and stuff like that and really just bring it all to a close. So obviously I filmed it over seven days, I filmed it over a week and it's been really intense. That first couple of days especially where I was fishing on absolutely no sleep and I've still not caught up on my sleep to be quite honest with you. Overslept yesterday before we went for the eels and that was my body telling me that you've had enough now, do you know what I mean? So. It has been intense and I don't recommend to anybody doing that. Don't go and do it over a week. If you're going to attempt this, do it over separate days, but see how many species you can catch in each consecutive days. Be honest with yourself. There's times that I obviously, I could have cheated on this race. I could have saved videos where I've caught sturgeon and stuff like that and used them for the rod race. But I've done this to challenge myself and I'm nothing to prove to anybody. Do you know what I mean? And I have, really enjoyed it it's been tough but i have enjoyed it because i've learned so much and i know i've said that a couple of times but i really have i've learned new techniques like trotting i've learned more about individual species and targeting them and it's actually been really enjoyable it's been expensive so the costs involved over the week i think i've spent probably round about 160 quid to 170 quid on fuel that's my biggest cost because i've been here there and everywhere day tickets and fishery expenses i think i've probably spent between 70 and 80 quid 
obviously we did the 24 hours at Brookside which is um, a fairly big expense for a 24 hour there and then we've had multiple day tickets since and day tickets on stretches of river and stuff like that bait I've used a lot of my own bait so I've saved some money there but I've still spent money on hemp I've spent money on uh, pellets hook baits um, pepper army like today so I would say in terms of how much I've spent on baits maybe 70 80 quid so it's probably coming up to about 300 350 quid that I spent doing this rod race but it really has been worth it and I'm hoping more than anything that you guys have enjoyed this series that's the main thing we've still got a few hours in which to take one more species off i think i got really lucky at high haze the other day i think i would have ended up on a lot less species than i did but it just seemed that the conditions had settled and the fish were absolutely on the munch that day especially the carp so even though autumn came in like an absolute steam train the day after me starting the rod race i think we've done okay i think luck's been on my side and we've managed to tick some really tough species off the list and to end on 22 so far out of the 25 i can't complain i really can't but yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed it and i hope that you'll subscribe and stick around for future adventures future rod races future challenges there'll be loads to come even over winter and into next year so hopefully you still watch the videos through the colder months even if you aren't on the bank yourself and hopefully for some of you that can't fish through the winter these videos are going to be your escape and your little fishing fix for the week i would have just liked to take sturgeon off at the finish line well folks i think i'm going to have to call it there and get packed up it looks like i've stumbled and fallen on the final hurdle of the rod race and these elusive sturgeon have evaded me today i've tried three different swims i've given it everything that i possibly could to try and get one on the bank and get a bite but i've not had a bite off anything today carp sturgeon nothing so it's been tough fishing there's no doubt about that it's been an absolutely demoralizing day but saying that i am so happy with how the rod race has turned out and we're finishing it there on 22 out of 25 species off the list let that train go past so i just want to say thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next westies angling for some more adventures